So this is AndyTube, and in this video, I'm going to be working on the jewel of a Singer Featherweight sewing machine. And that jewel is this little Category 3 motor right here. Now, as near as I can tell, there's three or four different motor versions that were used on the different featherweight variations. And this is the first one, uh, Style 3 or Catalog 3, um, Category 3. But that's what we're going to work on today. And what my plan is, is to take it off the machine and open it up and take a look at it. See what the uh, the motor brushes look like, uh, investigate these uh, grease tubes and grease wicks and uh, so forth. So sounds ambitious, right? <laughs> but we're going to start on the bottom because we've got some wiring here. Now of course you would remove the thumb nut and take off the bottom plate, oil pan, drip pan, and uh, on mine these motor wires have already been removed from the terminal uh, because I've been working on the switch and the light and so forth. But what normally you would see here is in this little hole there you you would see um, a little double-sided clamp a little you know like bird wing clamp that would screw in here and hold these wires in a position something like that okay on their way to the terminal so if we're going to take this out, we've got to remove this wiring or disconnect this wiring, I guess would be a better way to say it. And uh, to do that, we're going to uh, remove the terminal mounting screw and lean that terminal out. And I'll show you where these wires would normally be terminated on the back side of the terminal. If you haven't seen this before, it's just one mounting screw. Screws through this Bakelite uh, terminal right into the body. Okay. And then you would fold this down or Pull it out if you have enough wires, uh, you know, slack in the wires, and let's see if we can see that there pretty good. There's three um, terminals here. I have the cap off of this middle terminal, so you can see it's just a brass screw there. And they're labeled 1, 2, and 3. And there is a little black circle with a black 2 here. 1, 2, 3. And the motor wires would be on 2 and 3. So, let's see if I could put this wire on 2 here for a moment. To kind of show you what to expect. Okay, so you'd have one of the motor wires terminated there, and you'd have this little thumb nut. It's Bakelite on the outside and like a brass or bronze on the inside. And it just, uh, you know, like any nut, it just screws right on to the little screw. So you'd see something like that, and you would loosen the thumb screws on two and three. And you would follow your motor wires up and you would remove those wires from
from 2 and then the other one would be under 3 and you'd remove that. Okay, so 2 and 3 are your motor wire terminations. Okay, and we, we can leave this here for now. That's, that's okay. Uh, we've got to push these wires up through a space and they, they go up below the motor. So it's time now to, to get the motor off the motor mount. Okay, right up under in there whoops is where those wires come up and they go through a little rubber grommet in a hole and they go into the motor housing uh, from what I see in the diagrams so the motors held on by one mounting screw and you know you loosen it when you're uh, adjusting belt tension but when you're going to take the motor off we need to remove the screw all the way like that you see the washer and a screw it goes through this little built-in bracket here right here and it screws right into the motor housing right there okay so now we've got this uh, motor free but we got to pull the wires up that trough and and out and uh, I see that these wires I'm gonna prop this up here so we can we can see like the the motor side maybe and the wire side below here what we don't want to do is grab the motor and start pulling on it because we don't know the situation with these wires going inside the motor housing right so we want to like feed the wires in a little bit and gently pull pull them through and these wires are in some kind of a woven covering, like a tube. So I'm going to try and push. I can I can see and feel this black woven. I can see the end of it over here. I don't know if it'd be easier to pull that woven tube out this way. And off the wires or push it through it's pretty old <laughs> and it's dirty of course see I can't I can't I can't get much of a well I can't get much of a grip on this tubing thing here I, I, I guess that's to protect the wires, maybe from heat, although it's not that much heat down there. But since these wires are kind of cloth covered, yes, uh, maybe that's why they put them in this thing. Man, what a... Oh, whew. Okay, so, <laughs> there they go. Let me, let me... Look here where the motor housing. Oh, look. Hmm. It's been a few decades since that was off. I, I see some glitter and I see some thread scraps and dust, and it looks like a little cat hair or something in there. Hmm. Hey. <laughs> Okay, so we'll have to clean that up. But I wanted to show you the back end. Uh, you know where I was pulling those wires uh, from. It kind of goes in and it goes down. Just like a sweeping 45 degree angle like that. Okay. 
So, we'll move this out of the way now and we can take a little look at the motor here. Let's look at this woven tube. It looks like uh, cording or something wrapped around an inner sheath. Let's see if I can just pull these wires out of it here. Huh. How do you like that? Yeah, some some kind of string or cord wrapped around. It looks like a inner. Hmm, still a little flexible, but you can see how it's bent like that to come up through that hole I was showing you. All right, and. Here is the wires going into the motor housing, and I, I see the rubber grommet is gone. I don't know if it just rotted away, or if somebody's been in here before and and worked on it. You can see that the, this is just from the cording. That's how dirty that is and, and falling apart. So I don't know. Uh, what happened to the rubber grommet here? But we're seeing uh, uh, one of the brush covers, the motor brush, carbon motor brush goes in here and there's a little bake light screw cap, I think they call it. Here's one of the screws that holds the motor together. Up on, I guess what we call the top, we see a grease port for the motor lubricant and we see the other brush cover which makes sense they're they're going to be uh, like this I guess opposing on the commutator and down here on the back side where it's it's mounted like this on the machine we see a second uh, I guess grease port we call it and there's uh, supposed to be a wick in here a wool wick and a little spring pushing on it and it pushes against the main motor shaft that sits in a bronze bearing in here and when the motor reaches uh, warms up it kind of softens or melts the grease that's up in here a little bit and lets it start traveling through the wick and depositing onto the motor shaft. And we'll take a look at this from the inside. And then uh, here is the other bolt that holds the, mo the, the motor together. Okay, then we have a pulley which needs to come off because we're going to pull this motor open and there it is right up here on the pulley is a little tiny set screw and uh, I was warned that that's a dangerous set screw <laughs> that it can easily strip off because it's small and it can be um, stuck in there real good. So we'll give it a try and if it doesn't want to come out I'll start using some penetrating oil or heat or something. But uh, that's a little, little tour of the motor <laughs> I guess we could say. But let's see if we can get this pulley. <clears throat> because of these metal troughs here, this is where the motor belt rides in. Uh, we've got to have a pretty narrow screwdriver. Maybe if we move it over here where the belt path, we can come in like that and get on that set screw. Right? And... Uh, See if we can get on it here. Let me test this. I tried to pick a tip that fit it pretty good. 
Yeah. These are a hollow ground screw tip and it instead of a V groove tip it's kind of a flatter tip that's supposed you know that helps you get the screw out without stripping it so let's give it a let's give it a try here I want to be sure that I'm really in that as a matter of fact let me find an old needle here and uh, just kind of clean out any debris in the slot of the set screw because I don't want to have to drill this out and then go try and find a pulley to buy someplace to replace it. <clears throat> hey, all right. I'll take this out and show it to you, and you can see how small it is. Hold it. The um, little slot there. So if it wouldn't come out for me, I would take some, um, you know, like like WD-40. I had some here in preparation. And usually what I'll do is, uh, on a tight spot like this, I might spray it into this bottle and get enough that I can get some in an eyedropper because I can control an eyedropper a lot better than a spray. And then I would start putting little drops on top of that set screw and trying to let it penetrate into those threads uh, which is what a penetrating oil does of course and then I'd also uh, start warming it up with a hair dryer or, or a heat gun to, to help it even get in there more and uh, you know that would to, to be able to get the set screw out without damaging it let's say that now, this should just pull off now. <laughs> and uh, it doesn't want to, which isn't surprising. Um, you can see here there's a flat spot right here that that set screw sits on. <laughs> so the motor shaft has a flat spot. And we can also uh, try and put some penetrating oil, or if you warm this up, you know it may it may loosen that enough. I'll just go right around the edge of the motor shaft there and put one or two drops of this oil. See if I can get it penetrating in there. And uh, so here's my little wood, wood tapper here. Nothing hard here, right? Don't want to bend a motor shaft or anything. Just a wood wood handle. Now there is a lip on the back of this where the belt rides inside here. And I'm just going to try and go in there and like turn. I'm not going to pry. I'm just going to try and turn it against that lip and see if I... There it is. Oh, it's already loose. Okay. There we go. So we see that you see it's wet in there. The penetrating oil did get in there, which is good, and that that probably helped. And it's kind of kind of dirty and gunky in there. So, uh, but I'm hoping you can see that flat spot there. 
that the uh, set screw would ride on, go in and tighten on. So that's good. So let's take out these uh, two big screws here that put the two halves of the motor or the two end caps of the motor, I guess. <clears throat> uh oh. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Starting to think this has never been opened up. <laughs> let's put, uh, let's get my little, this is a, I call it a mini ratchet. It came with this uh, set of hollow ground uh, screwdriver set I bought from the Chapman, Chapman Manufacturing Company came with a few bits and this little thing they call a spinner and a handle and this little like mini socket ratchet and the screwdriver shaft and then you can put it in the handle and you can interchange bits and I think you can get about I think it said like three times the uh, pressure or the torque than just the screwdriver and I, I think you could you can you might be able to put the bits right in here too without using the extension so let's see if I can make sure we go lefty loosey here Okay, let's do the other one while we got this set up here. Pretty stiff. Now I'm sure this motor warms up and everything, and I, you know, parts tend to stick like that over the years and decades. <clears throat> this one's a little easier. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, just get a regular screwdriver now to take this out. I really like, I just like the look of this motor. That's why I called it a jewel or the jewel. Um, it, I mean, it obviously hadn't been serviced when I got this machine and everything, and it still ran after a while. <laughs> but if you heard it there, it's kind of whiny. I'm, sh I'm sure that these, I think the grease wicks are dry and the bearings are dry and stuff. So... All right, let's get rid of my penetrating oil and get some of these screwdriver bits out of the way. And so this would be what I call the front because the pulley goes there. And what I want to do is just start... Uh, whoop, I think I better take out the carbon brushes if they'll come. <clears throat> okay. I think somebody's probably tightened those with a screwdriver. These are fragile, so we want to see if they'll just... There. Okay, not too bad. I think I would not use a screwdriver when I put them back. I think thumb, thumb tight is going to be enough on these. So there's the little brush cap. And we can see the spring that is attached to the carbon brush and helps keep it pushed against the commutator. Let's see if we can 
Okay, there we go. Pulled it right out with it. Here's our carbon brush. That's a lot of uh, carbon left there, uh, in my opinion. I mean, I've used these down to where they're like 3 sixteenths of an inch or even an eighth because I, I think the original Singer Carbons are more dense and better made than most of the stuff you can buy these days. So, put that safely aside and let's try this other one. Oh, still. I saw a lot of pictures of cracked caps here. <laughs> where, where, like, one, one side of the top was broken off. So I'm pretty lucky with these weren't too tight. Here's the other cap. It's in good shape. And here's another carbon. Let's see. We can pull it out. Now if, if, if they stick in there or the spring comes off and doesn't bring the carbon, uh, we can work around that. You know, I've done other motors, a lot of other motors. So there. Can you you see the little round circle, the round part of the that the brush connects onto, right? But it got up so far and it it, it didn't want to come out. So to put that on, I don't I don't think I'm going to be able to get it back on. But if I push, it's going to go down in there. Let's see. Usually you you I go left when I'm twisting the spring back onto the carbon. It gets right up, right up to the edge there. So I don't know if it's dirty in there. I'm trying to pull it straight. I just feel like it's it gets to a point and it's stuck. Yeah. Now I suppose I could try and grab it with a needle nose but I'm not. I'm. Let's just push it down in there and pretend it's stuck in there, which I have found, and the spring pops right off. Okay? So, we'll be aware of that, and let's start slowly opening up this motor. So, I want to pull these two ends apart. And I'm going to... You can see the movement on my hand here. I'm kind of... See that? Twisting at odds. You see it's starting to... You can hear it moving a little. And I want to... This side seems to be coming easier. So I'm just going to work on that maybe first. See if I can... Okay, see it? See it? Oh. Okay. This covers, this is like a shield covering a center part here. And there's metal here, and it's like they're stuck together. Oh, here they're coming apart. Okay. I was going to show you, if they're, if they're like this, you can gently go in and, and, and see how I'm separating those two parts now. But just be gentle. You know, you don't know what's in there. You don't want to damage anything. Take a look at this end. Okay. So, when you have a, a brush in there, you're going to have a wire coming from these uh, coils of wire here, and and you don't want to uh, shoom, pull this off and break the solder. Inside there is a little square like brass tube that the carbon brush sits in and on the end in the machine I'll, uh, in, inside the motor I mean I'll show you in a second here there's a wire soldered to a little tab on the end of that so if you yank this off and you and you break that you're gonna have to re-solder that little thing and you you won't be happy that you have to do it see the wires here now see them 
So we're just going to gently straighten them out so we have a little bit of slack and we're going to look inside this dirty old mower motor. <laughs> Boy, it's dirty in there, isn't it? As a matter of fact, I'm going to switch out my new oil cloth for my oldest oil cloth because <laughs> that looks pretty nasty in there. I don't know what's what's in there but we'll find out let's see if is this the one that had the stuck motor carbon brush no see where that brush would come down and then the brush is going to sit right on the commutator you can see kind of the wear marks of it and the other end of that wire is coming out of the coil see and right down here that wire is soldered to that little brass tube and i don't know if that will pull out of there can you i don't think it can i i guess it would i guess you could force it out but i'd be worried it would you would bend it or distort it and then the carbon wouldn't go in it anymore so let's turn this over there oh okay here's our little here's the end of our brush so I'm just going to gently push it down through just slid right through and then I'll dump it out okay Usually you're going to see these, uh, you know, worn the same amount, um, you know, because they're used at the same amount at the same time. And if, if you replace them, you always replace both of them at the same time. If your spring comes off here, to put it back on, I have found it helps to twist the, the little spring back, uh, like counterclockwise, so that it goes right on there. Is it, if you're twisting it like this, it, it makes the spring close on itself. So let's get the other one here. Hey, where's my other brush? There. See, and you should see that they're about the same size all the time. Because one, one sits here. Hmm, let's get up here. Here's the hole, so one sits up here and is pushed against the commutator like that, and one will be 180 degrees on the other side, pushing on it from, from over here, okay? So I, I'm going to reuse these because to me they have a lot, a lot of life left for how old this machine is. Maybe they were... Maybe they were replaced in the 80s or something. <laughs> Man, that's dirty in there. Okay. See the windings here? A dirt, very dirty commutator. Wow. That is very dirty. I don't know what all this stuff down in there. See if I can brush it out and clean it out. But now we're going to have to work on this end. And as we pull this off, we're going to want to push these motor wires down into the housing okay and it's just you know a little at a time a little at a time right because these these wires are connected to inside so we don't want to break anything in there right here's the uh, pulley end of the motor there's a little like a heat shield in there core see how these wires come right off and then come out this side look how much cleaner this side is that doesn't have the motor brushes and stuff in there <laughs> looks a lot cleaner doesn't it mm-hmm 
and I told you about the the grease tube, the grease port here, and inside here you can see this um, inside of the tube or like a tunnel that that wick sits into and goes right in. Oh, hey, I'm glad that happened because I didn't mention that taking these off. You're going to have these little washers and spacers that go on to. Let me see if there's anything else on here. Yeah, look, there's two already. And they, they look like, uh, well, show them to you here. They're dirty, but they look like brass or copper. Let me see this third one, if they're all the same. This one looks different. This has a different, like it's steel. And it's thinner. Let me get let me get the let me get them all up here. So this is the one put on last. These two were put on the shaft first, and this one's last. You see, it's a little different type. So for now, I'm just going to put them back on there for now until I can make a note to myself of the, how they go on there properly. And see that one was up against the bushing here, stuck to it. So there's the bushing, and there's the there's the little port I was telling you about. And then uh, over here you're going to have the the two um, motor brush ports. You know where where the motor brush goes up here under the cap and it sticks down through there. I want to clean that and I'm looking for the lubrication. Oh, see I was looking inside like saying hey where's that little tube going into the uh, bushing but it's on the outside. See how it's molded here on the outside. So this is the bushing in there. Here's the inside view of that bushing. And it's going to have a wick in there. Now let me look on the end of this and see. I think the diagram on this Model 3 or Category 3 or Catalog 3, it's got one, one washer right there. I don't see any more. So the commutator end has one washer and the pulley end has three. Okay. Whee. So uh, we'll look at cleaning this. Look at all this uh, stuff that came out of there. We'll look at cleaning this, but I, I'm just so curious about these grease wick. You know, and I researched, I tried to find out uh, about them. And uh, mostly what I heard was, don't take them out. If they're hard, put a drop of oil up here to, to let it penetrate. Just plain sewing machine oil, not tri-flow or anything with PTFE. Just regular sewing machine oil with no additives. Put a drop in there. That'll soften up the wick and then you you uh, you can use uh, let me see what else is here you can use a uh, hollow q-tip tube maybe like like this where it's a plastic and uh, I see if this is small enough let me cut this off here and the idea is you can go in there and and push around and 
you can feel the top of that wick and you can try and pull out any old uh, grease that's in there you know to clean it out right it looks like I got some then you cut off a little bit of that until you got to a clean spot and you go in there and get some more you want to get as much of the old stuff out as you can so you keep doing that get as much out then you put your drop of oil maybe to soften it and then you squirt some motor lubricant in here and it's it's not a big space to hold it like uh, you know it's about an inch the whole thing and I don't know if it's like three quarters of an inch is the wick or and a quarter inch is this spring area that you put the grease in so you know what I uh, mostly I heard don't take them out <laughs> you know don't don't take them out <laughs> so you know of course we're gonna take them out right so from me pushing on it um, with that uh, q-tip thing and there's no motor shaft I can see I can see the end of the hmm, I can see the end of the wick right here so I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and pick it out of there I'm just going to uh, gently use the point of a needle and kind of like eh, eh, drag I gotta say eh, eh, see when you when you drag it <laughs> and it's bending it a little bit and I'm, I'm hoping it will push right through to the bottom uh, that's actually going pretty good now I also have a uh, specialized tool here paper clip <laughs> that you could try and move this up and just gently I mean you don't want to force it and you don't want big movements because you don't want to tear up that wick right oh there it's gone it is gone let me uh, let me stick that up through the okay there can you see I got there's no wick now up in there is still the spring. Let's see. Oh, here's the wick. Look, like it looks like a little sick worm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'd heard about this. This blackened. Oh yeah, see it's hardened. And is what's on the motor shaft. And it is. It's it's kind of stiff and hard with old dried up stuff this is still you know pretty flexible so now we know how long the wick is right <laughs> and maybe we can soak this in alcohol or kerosene and get some of that old gunky I can't think it would flow too good with this hard hard uh, tip the other end is a little bit firm and the middle is you know look flexible this end is hard so I was always curious about that I, I don't know how this compares to other wicks you know this is the first one I've ever seen I'm not sure how, how will how I'll get it back in there I think just reversing what I did but I'm real curious if I can get the spring out now they got the wick I want to see what that spring looks like mm-hmm what do you think should we do it 